happy Manna Monday. Welcome back to our third installment of our Black History Manna Monday devotional series. I'm grateful to be with you. Grateful that you have chosen again to join me on this journey as we meet with God to see what, 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 what manna God has for us this week. So without any further ado, as always, grab your paper, your pen, your device, your journal, your tablet, your iPad, Mac, PC, whatever it is that you need. And let's get into this word. Our Man of Money devotional thought comes to us from Exodus chapter 1, verses 13 through 21. Exodus chapter 1, verses 13 through 21. The word of God says, The Egyptians used violence to compel the sons of Israel to labor. And they made their lives bitter with hard labor in mortar and bricks, and had all kinds of labor in the field, all their labors which they violently had they violently had them perform as slaves. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other who was named Pua. And he said, when you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall put him to death. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. We're going to come back to that. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but let the boys live. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and let the boys live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife can get to them. So God was good to the midwives. So God was good to the midwives and the people multiplied and became very mighty. And because the midwives feared God, he established households for them. God, we thank you for your word. We're excited for what you're going to say to us. We're excited for how you're going to speak to us. And we're excited to use what you've said to us and what you speak to us to transform our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So again, it's Black History Month. And I this passage uh, is one of my favorites. Um, the book of Exodus, this, this Exodus story is one that, that Black people closely link to their own narrative, their own story um in american in world history so in this portion of the story we meet the king of egypt and we meet we meet the king of egypt two mid hebrew midwives and god right we we meet this king who is paranoid about the multiplicity of these the, the hebrew they're they they're, they're they fear that these people are going to get too big so if they get too big they're going to they're going to overthrow us not only are they going to overthrow us they're going to gang up with other nations that don't like us and that's how they're really going to be able to overthrow us so they're like now we got to oppress these people and to keep them from being able to multiply the king says you know what this is what we need to do we need to kill every newborn son so that we keep them at bay, All right? So he tells these midwives, hey, when these Hebrew women are giving birth, I need y'all to kill every boy that comes out. If it's a girl, let her live, but if it's a boy, kill her. And then we get to the phrase, but the midwives feared God. And the interesting thing about this, at this point of the story, is that their fear of God is directly linked to them subsequently lying. That always gives me pause. Because this first chapter of Exodus, this, this opening narrative of Exodus is parallel to the opening narrative of Genesis, where also, there also occurs lying. So there's deception both in the opening act of Genesis and there's deception in the, in the opening act of Exodus. But somehow one act of deception is frowned upon by God. The other act of deception is said to be a result of them fearing God. So that begs the question, now wait a minute, I thought we're not supposed to lie. You know, as a kid, you're told, that's one of the first, very first lessons we're taught as children. Do not lie. That's one of the first things you get in big trouble with parents, with teachers, is for lying. So what makes this different? And in the uh, um, spirit of Black History Month, I want to posit and present and propose to you what it looks like when freedom comes through disobedience when freedom comes through fearing God enough to lie to the empire fearing God enough to disobey Pharaoh 
what we see is that it's not that God is sanctioning or endorsing a lying. God is endorsing a heart that is after him. So we as black people, we as people who are people of color, people who are, uh, who are determined to follow God into whatever work he is doing, need to engage in discernment. Remember in December, we talked about Joseph and his compassion and conviction, how he merged the two to follow Jesus. And we talked about discernment being the bridge that brings compassion and conviction together. And th this is what the Hebrew midwives are displaying right now. They are displaying what discernment to God, being a, 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 attuned to the voice of God, what that looks like. So they know that God is not a God who oppresses. God is not a God who is racist. God is not a God who is sexist. Sexist. So they are not going to continue to perpetuate and act a culture and environment that kills and assassinates people because they don't look a certain way or they're not a particular gender because of fear of our own power being suppressed. We don't serve a God who rules with a heavy hand. We serve a God who rules by dying on a cross. So these Hebrew midwives say our our freedom, our obedience comes through disobedience. So we lie. We're not lying to God. We are lying to the empire because as Martin Luther King says, it is our duty to obey unjust laws. So when the law of the land conflicts with the law of God, we have a duty to obey the law of God. So when oppression seeks to have you follow a particular protocol, when oppression seeks to have you follow a particular empire, when oppression, slavery, racism, sexism, whatever other isms there are, when they seek to have you mirror the image of Satan, that is when we are called to disobedience. Sometimes the way to obedience is through disobedience. So as you go about this week, as you go about your day, particularly as a black person, think about the opportunities you have to stand up against the empire. The empire may come in the form of a job. The empire may come in the form of a person. The empire may come in the form of um, somebody who is who you encounter who can't do anything for you, but you're in, you're, you're in the position to do something for them. That's what the, the empire comes in different forms. Whatever form, whatever thing, whatever capacity, whatever, whatever, whatever opportunity comes to seek to rule with a heavy hand, God is asking you and is commanding you to act with defiance by disobeying unjust laws, protocols, procedures, rules, wherever you may be. God is calling you to be a Shifra and to be a Pua. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I pray that you would like it, share it, allow it to be a blessing to others. And if you would like to donate to our ministry financially, you can do so in the ways that are on our screen, our cash app, being our easy way, easiest way, of course, dollar sign, B-E-R-E-A-N, 4555. And of course, if you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the comments and we will be praying for you. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the shifras and the puas of our lives. We thank you for the Hebrew midwives. We thank you for people who are willing to stand up against the empire, stand up against unjust rules, stand up against injustice, even if that looks like breaking laws, even if that looks like deception, reminding ourselves that we are called to discern what you are calling to us to do in the moment, what it looks like to be compassionate, above all, what it looks like to love the Lord our God, with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Whatever we do is to be subject to those two overarching rules and laws. We pray over our hearts, over our spirits, over our minds, so that we can truly be what you have called us to be. I pray for those who are watching, those who will be watching. I pray for our churches. I pray for our pastor. I pray for all those who are bereaved, sick, grieving in any capacity. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.